What's up guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ant Canada Ant Channel. This is your Ant Nerd, Mikey Bustos, here to bring you another Ant video. Now, um, before I start, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much because you guys are just sending in some amazing photos and videos of your ant colonies in our formicariums and it's just amazing and I'm drooling over your amazing colonies. Like, check out this Pogonomermex californicus colony from Chad Weagle, all the way from Los Angeles, California, USA. And this Myrmacarubra colony from Luke Suwitzki, all the way from Northamptonshire, England. Pretty amazing, guys. I'm totally jealous of your ant colonies, but super happy that you guys are totally enjoying your ant keeping experience. Thank you so much, um, you guys, for the support and for watching my videos. I really hope these videos are helping you out. Now, I just spent the weekend on an island here in the Philippines called Corregidor Island and it happens to be a very significant island historically for the Philippines because it happened to be an army base for the Americans during World War II. So I got to see a lot of cool historical sites like the barracks um, and different guns and stuff and even did a night tour in one of the underground tunnels that were inhabited by the Japanese. And it was kind of scary, but it did give me a great idea as to what to do for this week's video. Now leading into what this video is about, a customer from Nebraska by the name of Ben Nelson wrote to me and sent me a video with a very cool question. Check it out. There's some like that are connected or they're like fighting over each other, fighting over something or they're connected. I don't know if they're mating. None of them have wings. But if you look right here, I don't know if they're mating when they're connected like that or what. But there's a lot of them that are doing it. See these two ants? Cool video. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, especially if you're from North America, to what he saw. And so to answer your great question, Ben, what that is, is an ant war. And so I wanted to do this video on what happens when ants meet, whether it be single ants or a group of ants or an entire colony of ants, and why it happens. Now, I get a lot of requests to film footage of mixing two ant colonies, and I just won't do it, I can't. And most serious ant keepers can't either, because it's kind of cruel, it's kind of tantamount to cockfighting or pit bull fighting. So I won't do it, but I know what happens in nature. So how did this ant war that Ben filmed start? What happens is, during the spring and during the summer, ant colonies like Tetramorium ants often expand their territory as the colony gets bigger. Or entire colonies decide, for whatever reason, to travel and to move their nest. And what happens sometimes is two unrelated colonies come together. And when they do, that's what starts an ant war. So let's examine how an ant war starts. Basically, every ant colony has its own distinct scent. So ants from the same colony identify one another based on this scent. Now a colony scent is caused by molecule arrangements of carbon on their exoskeleton. In the nest, there are ants usually at the entrances that will make sure those who pass in are of the same colony and have that distinct colony scent. Now even though you might have a group of ants of the same species, it doesn't mean that they have the same colony scent. Every colony has their distinct scent. It's kind of like their name tag. Like, this is where I'm from, I'm one of you guys. In the wild, single ants coming together usually won't cause each other problems. They'll just kind of meet and go, whoops, sorry, and kind of go separate ways. But if you're talking about a group of ants, like a column of ants, meeting another column of ants, then you got problems. All right, guys, I'm here on Corregidor Island in the Philippines, and I'm just watching this huge trail here of Asian weaver ants, Ecophila smaragdina. Look at them. Beautiful. And now this trail goes all the way, see, goes all the way here and up there, down there, all the way there. And it just kind of like continues onto this road here. I believe they head this way. See them? And the trail goes up the tree where I'm assuming their nest is. Look at that massive ants there. 
Wow. Oh, you know what? Are they killing an ant? It looks like it. I wonder if this is an ant war. You see? They're kind of like... Holding an ant. Must be... They must be trying to kill it or something. Seems like a big deal. People really want that ant dead. Now these ants stretch um, their food and if they want to kill some thing they'll stretch them because the their feet are really good at gripping and they have such great strength which of course they need to you know bend leaves into place while they weave them together. All right. Wow, holy, this, the trail continues all the way up into the tree. I wonder where their nest is. Must be somewhere way up there. Now there are some circumstances in the wild where ants of different species can kind of mix. Of course, we have those parasitic species where a parasitic queen infiltrates a host colony and eventually takes over as egg-laying queen. Um, she kills the queen or convinces the workers to kill the host queen. Yes, come in. My queen, your highness, there is another ant in the nest closer to the surface that is claiming she is the true queen. <laughs> Don't be silly, that's impossible. I am your queen. There is no other. See? Mm, yes, it's true. You are our queen. Please forgive me, your highness. I shall spread the news. <clears throat> Attention, colony. This is one of your thousands of sisters. We have a very important message. Our true queen is here and intact. Do not believe the pheromones of any strange queen you may smell, no matter how queenie. There you are. What? Wh who are you? What are you doing here? How did the majors let you in? I do not know what you speak of, you imposter. I am the true queen of this colony. See? <laughs> oh, blasphemy! How dare you speak to the queen like that? <laughs> Workers, seize her! No, I am the queen. As for you, you imposter, these daughters have no other queen but me! No, I am the real queen. I am queen. No, I am queen. I am. I am. I am the one and only queen. Never. You both smell. You both smell. You both smell so. You both smell so. You both smell so. You both smell so. Uh, you both smell so convincing. And we do not know who our true queen is. My daughters. I raised you from the moment I built the claustral cell last year. Look at her small gaster. Does it look like she was able to fully sustain herself through the cold winter months and be able to nourish a generation of Nantics on her own? <clears throat> well, I'm sure you may be right. Oh, possibly might be queen of ours. But we trust our antennae, and right now she is smelling quite convincing with her pheromone identification. Yes, because I am your real queen, my children. Now go and slay that fake queen. She is an intruder. No, you mustn't. <coughs> Smell me. I am your queen. What is wrong with you all? No, she isn't. <coughs> get her. Come on, ladies. You heard the queen. Let's get her. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Ah, no. Smell me. <coughs> I am your queen! No, uh, Ah, thank you, my children. Now, let me go get cozy in this room here a little bit. <laughs> my brand new bedroom. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my old, comfortable, and familiar bedroom that I have lived in for all of time. <laughs> That's one circumstance. Another circumstance is when you have things like thief ants that live 
amongst a host colony and kind of steal from them. Um, and there are circumstances above ground as well where ants have toll gates. Now, I've heard this observation from some of my ant friends over in California where it seemed like there were larger ants that were monitoring the flow of various species of ants along a highway of ants. And on this highway were different species bringing food back to their nests and, you know, ants venturing out into the open. And in some cases, it was observed that these larger toll gate ants would stop some of the ants as they were passing by and steal their goodies, their booties, their food um, and bring them back to their own colonies, which was kind of interesting. Now, another cool thing about colony scents is that the colony scent is usually constantly changing. So it's said that if you were to take a bunch of workers out from a colony, raise them alone in some other container for a few months and try introducing them back to the colony, chances are they will fight because they both were developing colony scents separately and perhaps might not be matching anymore. It's really cool to think that when ants are living together that they really have a colony scent that is constantly changing um, and they're updating, I guess, their colony scent. For what reason? I don't know. And this is just generally, perhaps not with all species, but this is generally what happens. I was once reading a blog about someone who introduced a whole mass of unrelated workers to an ant colony by simply raising them in formicariums that were together and separated by just a mesh. So if you can imagine, you have two unrelated colonies with a mesh in between, and this guy raised the colonies together that way. And I'm sure it caused a lot of alarm at first, but they couldn't really get to each other because of this mesh. But several months down the line, he removed the mesh and turns out the colony blended together. What had happened was the colony had developed a communal colony scent and eventually the workers identified one another as family. Another thing to note, another cool thing to note too about colony scents is that ants in a fridge, for whatever reason, tends to obscure the scent a little bit. So for those ants that hibernate in the winter, by the time spring comes around, they all have to develop, I guess, a new communal scent. Now, for those of you who have seen my video on introducing a parasitic queen to a host species, part of the process involves um, putting all ants in the fridge or the freezer just to get rid of that scent. Now, I'm sure some of you guys might be asking, well, what about polygynous colonies? Well, ants that are truly polygynous, like say, Argentine ants, they accept multiple queens in a colony and unrelated workers are able to blend with each other without war. They're essentially a species of ants that don't war, <laughs> which is why Argentine ants have been pretty successful at kind of conquering a lot of parts of the world. And in fact, they say the largest colony in the world are Argentine ants because they're just one huge super colony. And so guys, that wraps up my talk on ant wars and ant interactions and colony scents. Hope you guys like this video and thanks so much for watching. Thank you guys again for the support. Please, please, please be sure to write to me if you have any questions. It's contact-us at antscanada.com and please subscribe to our ant videos. Take care and love forever. What's up guys? Thanks so much for watching my videos. It really means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please subscribe to my videos by hitting that subscribe button. And also don't forget to check out our latest video on our new hybrid nests that will be hitting AntsCanada.com very soon. And don't forget to check out our Solenopsis geminata colony. Thanks so much guys. It's ant love forever.